So Dolly Parton and her iconic titties make major waves yesterday as this 75 year old recreates an iconic Playboy uh, cover that she had for her husband's birthday. I'm talking the little bodysuit. I'm talking the collar. I'm talking the ears, the whole shebang. And did I mention she's 75, 75 and crushing it? Goals for me, goals for thee. Okay. And the internet, as it should, is rejoicing, saying, This is amazing. You look so hot. You look gorgeous. Go get them, girl. Hot girl summer. Hippity hop hop all over Bunny Town. Okay. We are so here for it. But here's the thing, though, that got me thinking because we are also so uptight when it comes to age. Think about it. There are so many double standards and cliches and annoyance when it comes to age differences and ageism and all different arenas, right? Relationships, sex, power, money, uh, influence, success. It goes on and on. So while we're clapping and we're happening for Dolly, we also really do have our panties in a wad in a lot of ways when it comes to age. And that is my poem and sermon for the day. No, we're going to dive into this today, you guys, because this is my mother effing wheelhouse. Do you want to know why? We're going to talk about and climb in like we're motorboating Dolly. We're going to climb into this topic when it comes to Hollywood, of course, because we know Hollywood loves nothing more than a Botox moment and an age gap. But this is my expertise because I was in Hollywood. So I witnessed this firsthand, right? Like every Dennis Quaid, Dick and Harry pumping out a factory of like dating your local USC prom queen. Okay. I have seen it and I have really some great firsthand stories about this. So stick around for the anecdotes of our times. But I also have had experience of my own with the cliche of the age gap and the older man. Yes. So you are in good hands today because like I said, this is my expertise. I've seen it. I've breathed it. I've ate it. That sounds weird. I've lived it and I've experienced it in a 3D reality. So let's get it cracking. Okay. Let's first, before we get into the Hollywood, into the Hollywood madness, that is my world. Let's talk about sexuality and dating when it comes to age and age gaps, okay? Because here, here's the obvious, here's the elephant in the room, is that older men, a lot of the times, go with younger women, and it doesn't really go both ways. And women get a really annoyed, annoyed with this, right? But should they? I mean, look at Dolly. Dolly doesn't give a shit. She's like, bitch, try me. Try me. I'm twerking with my bunny tail on your 20 year old ass. Okay. (laughs) Which like, if that's not me, then just like run me over with a John Deere truck. If that's not me at 75, but here's the thing. Okay. Because I feel like we boil the cliche of the older man, younger woman down to this like superficial vanity thing. Right. It's like, Oh, of course the older man, like going with the hot younger woman and da, 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 da. And so I think, and I know, I know that it's more than that. Is it just about looks? Is it just about looks? Now, here's the thing, okay? And this may not be having people, you know, doing a pep rally. But is there something to be said about the way that men age versus the way women age? Like, before I get into the relationship dynamics, you know, there's the whole thing of, like, the silver fox And women, on the other hand, having to do all this stuff to look right and tight, like plastic surgeries and all this stuff, right? So the cold, hard truth is, do men just age? Is there a factor where men just age better than women? Now, that isn't to say, like, I think women at all ages are gorgeous. My mom, total MILF. She is stunning and she's so adorable and beautiful on the inside and out. Again, if I'm, if I have half her beauty at her age, like I will be Dolly part, Dolly partening all on your ass. But so I'm not saying that. Right. And there's also the facet of like, I feel like this is a little sidebar, but women, like I've been really feeling lately, like, you know, I, I support men all the time on this show. But a lot of the times, I just feel like women run the ship. Like, we are the wear and tear. We, we are the glue that holds the shit together. And sometimes, like, grown-ass men, I love you guys, but 
for lack of a better word, you guys are just incompetent. Like you, you need us. Okay. So if that's a factor of why maybe women don't age as gracefully, well, then you know what? Like that's because we're busting our backs, keeping your ass afloat. So there's that. But in a sidebar, because I'm going to get into some of the numbers, the life expectancy is longer for women than men. So we win. Okay, so there's that. Right. But it really gets me thinking when it comes to the whole like silver fox and men just have it better because they are sexier, older and women have to do all this upkeep and da da da. Is this a biological thing? Is this a social complex that we have created? I don't have an answer for you guys. I don't know, but I throw it out to you. Because it's true that we see younger women go with older men and not and not nearly as much as we see younger guys going with older cougars, if that is how you want to roll, right? No judgment. So let's get into my two favorite words to talk about this a little bit. The science. We love the science. Where are the gods of Dr. Fauci coming to start crying? Okay to strike their thunderbolt on my head like Hercules because they know all that science will ever be. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not just looks. It's not just looks. There is a reason that women who are younger tend to go with older men beyond looks. Okay. There is a component and I've read prepping for this. I read pieces in WebMD and psychology today. And there's a lot of research that shows that young women like that old men have their shit together, honey. All right. Whether it be finances, the fact that they're wiser, they have more life experience. They're ready to, you know, pop out those babies finally at 70 years old. No, I'm going to talk about that though in a minute, but really they are more, they're stable, they're secure. They got their ish together. You know, they're not smoking weed, playing Minecraft with their like, you know, 35 year old roommate in their basement of their mom's house. You know what I'm saying? As I record this <clears throat> from my mom's house, that's not, not awkward at all, but you know what I mean? Okay. I actually did have my shit together. I blame, I blame the panty, but They are, and at that point too, men are looking for more than just sex, believe it or not. So I learned this in a psychology class I took at LACC for fun, again, before the panty, before the Rona, give it up for community college. And I took a human sexuality class in there and we learned that science, scientist Taylor, here we go in for the kill in like a rocket ship, like Jeff Bezos ballsless fucking dick rocket. Okay. So we learned that male and women testosterone and sex drive actually flips. I've talked about before, you know, how young guys will literally have sex with this pen, albeit red kind of pointy and not that attractive. And young women were kind of like, I'm, I'm generalizing here. Okay. Holy shit. Calm, calm down. But young women really look for more like romance. Of course we have sex drive too, but you know what I'm saying? Okay. But funny enough, as we get older, have you noticed that older men call it Peter Pan syndrome, call it whatever you want, but this is actually biology. They older men tend to like, kind of want to settle down. They don't have as much of a sex drive and you'll see women like in their fifties and sixties be like, I will hump anything that walks. Like let's do this. Like they're, they are throwing down. Right. And it's kind of funny because it switches and that's because of levels of testosterone. When boys are younger, there's our popping all over town women. And they decrease over time. Women is actually the opposite. They're lower, younger, and then increase. So, and you even see this in movies, right? Like remember the movie book club and it had an older cast like Dan Keaton and they read 50 shades of gray and they're having a good ass time. Yeah. This isn't just the movies, people. This isn't just, you know, the powers that be at Paramount. This is your LACC local community college, you know, gathering. So here we go again. Why is it that older women aren't digging the younger men as much? You would think, right? Because their sex drives are popping later in life when like, you know, again, Tom, Dick, Harry, Harrison Ford, Dennis Quaid, whoever you want, they are like pill pop and Viagra, like it's 1999. Why wouldn't the women be going for younger boys? Hmm. I'm going to get to that. Also, I'll have you know, okay, so this was in a psychology today study from 2019. So it wasn't that long ago that 
there actually was like, even though there is this cliche, right? Like, oh, here we go again, the older man with the younger women. And obviously like, let's call it for what it is. Women get pissed about this because it's like, it's threatening, you know? And as a woman, I would feel that way too. Like, I know I got it going on and want to have it going on. And it's not just a physical thing. It's an inner, it's a confidence. It's a confidence. Okay. It's not like a cocky, again, superficial thing. It's like this inner confidence, right? And as women get older, we, like I said, we run the ship, we got it all going on. And that is just, it cannot be duplicated nor replicated, right? But there is more judgment. This psychology today study found in age gap relationships when the men was older than the women, you know why? Because of the whole like gold digger trophy wife stereotype, right? And it's also worth noting. I talked about this with Lance Bass, who's gay. He's an insane. I've showed the clip before on my show. And he was talking about this, how the age gaps right in the gay community and how there's so much less judgment. He's like, if anything, we're like, oh, you got that young tail guy. You go get him. Right. And it, when it comes to straight people, it's like, why are we a bunch of uptight old churning butter Puritans? Like we need to lighten up and loosen up. But I do think it's worth looking at these, like what's deeper and peeling back the layers of like, again, it's not just like Dennis Quaid wanting a, you know, going through a midlife crisis and wanting a young hot model. Like there's more to it. So, oh, and here's another thing. Remember I talked before about, um, older guys being like the silver fox and it's like not quite the same for older women like this is what i mean with the ugly truth okay um in 2018 science advances journal published a study okay and it says men's sexual desirability peaks at age 50 where (laughs) girls get ready to slit your wrist no i'm kidding because we got it going on remember we're good women hit their prime at (laughs) the ripe age of 18, which are they sure? Because I'm pretty sure like my hair looked like a drowned rat's nest, like bird's nest brown. I don't know what was going on. I was like hot off braces. So this study can go fuck itself. And I'm just kidding. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind too. Again, is this like biology? Is this just the cold, cold, hard truth? Is this a social construct that we've made? I don't know. Again, I don't have all the answers, even though I am, you know, (laughs) no Stradamus, but I throw it out to you folks in the crowd. Okay. So let's get into some examples before I get into Hollywood. This is like sort of a segue about how much more prevalent the truth is the truth that it's much more prevalent, the older man, younger versus and younger woman versus the other way around. And I do know like friends that have had the guy friends that have had the older woman, but it's definitely, you know, it's not as much of a thing. And, you know, if they want to swing that way, like swing all around town, like go for it. Okay. So here are some examples and I'm going to save the two best for last because I have personal story. Actually, maybe I'll bookend them. Okay. I'll start with Kevin Costner and I'll end with Tom Gerhardy. Okay. You are in for a treat. Grab your brownies. Okay. Kevin Costner. So Kevin Costner's wife is 21 years younger than he is. And they got married. They've been married a long time. I think they got married in like 2006 or something. And I met Kevin Costner on a red carpet when he was promoting this dog movie. I don't know. Milo Ventimiglia was in it. It's a dog movie. That's all I have to tell you. I don't even remember the name of it. Okay. And this is, you know, say what you will about my, my reporting prep. Uh, clearly, I don't, I don't do that much. Okay. I kind of go into it and just have a human combo. Like we're at the urinal, like we're at the bar sharing nuts and having a good time. Okay. So Kevin Costner is with these like three little kids. Okay. And Kevin Costner's, I don't know exactly how old he is. Either way, I'm shooting the shit with him and it's a family friendly day. Like I say, it's a dog movie. So I ask him like, Oh, obviously like you're here on this family day with your grandkids. Like how exciting is that for you? And me not being able, I am the worst. I am the most gullible person. I am that person who can't tell if someone is joking or not, probably because I make everything a joke and I have no chill. So when someone's making a joke with me, sometimes I'm like, I half smile and half not because I don't know if they're serious. Okay. So he says to me, dead ass, and this is not a full red carpet. Like there are publicists 
and reporters and dogs and Amanda Seyfried's like all around being acrobats on my head. Okay. This is like not an isolated, quiet room we're in. So this is a very public sphere. And he says to me, no, those are my kids. And I can't tell if he's kidding or not. So I'm doing that really awkward fake laugh. And he's like, no, really they are. And he's like, that's my wife right there. Like this young woman, probably around my age. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, let me go and take poison now. A la Romeo and Juliet style. I will see you later. Okay. And then later in the interview, he ends up being really cool about it because I asked him, um, you know, if there are any movies of his that he, he doesn't let his kids watch. And he made a joke and he was really cool. And he was like, no, you know, I don't watch my movies with my kids, but maybe, you know, I will one day with my grandkids. Wink, wink. Kind of like, yeah. And we laughed and then I went and murdered myself. <laughs> no. So And it's hilarious because, again, I'm the least judgmental person when it comes to this. Like, I never used to be this girl. And there, you know, I don't know what happened, but I had one relationship that was a 10 year. Someone was 10 years older than me. And that at the time I was like, wow, that seems like a lot. And that was child's play. Okay. Because somebody who is now very close in my life, I've talked about him on the show. We're not in a relationship, but whatever. It's it's been places. And he is like, Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's okay. So next, okay. So next example is needless to say, I am very understanding of the age gap situation. Okay. So here are some others I'm going to shoot through. Okay. Bruce Willis and his wife, he's 23 years older, Alec Baldwin and Eladia. They're 26 years different. And these fuckers are still popping about out kids. Let's talk about that. Okay. This is what I mean though. The men like later in life, wanting to finally settle down, alas. Uh, David Foster and Catherine McPhee, 35-year difference. I've met David Foster, um, nice man. Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, 25-year difference. Uh, Leo and his girlfriend, Camila Marone, I've interviewed her. She's great. And I talked to her and her mom once. I have a really great story about her, actually, but uh, I don't have time for it right now, so too bad. Um, Cliffhanger. And it's something that you wouldn't expect from her at all, being Leo DiCaprio's girlfriend. And I'm going to leave you on the edge of your seats because there's always another day, another dollar, another time for a new app. Okay. Uh, so Leo and his girlfriend, 23 years different. Dennis Quaid and his wife, 39 years difference. Sean Penn and his girlfriend, 32 years different. And then Erica and Tom Girardi, which is a huge story in the news right now because we're watching their divorce play out on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. 33 years different. Now, to bookend this little chapter, I have a story about these two. I have, okay, I've talked to Erica before all this went down, and she's super cool. And I had a phone interview with her. And this is when, like, it is rainbow and butterflies over at the Girardi's. Like, we don't know anything going on. And for those of you guys who are like, what? Erica and Tom, so Tom Girardi is a very, very famous attorney in L.A., His wife, Erica, who, like I said, is 33 years younger, is on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She's a performer. Well, it's all the shit is hitting the fan now because basically he's being accused of embezzling millions and millions of dollars from his clients. It's no bueno. That's all I got to say about that. So but here's how, like I said in my last episode this week about Brittany, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. I would like confide in Erica like we were in Girl Scouts about this age gap, right? Because I had one. And so we, I had a phone interview with her and once we were kind of like off the record, I guess, like it's not really off the record, but we, I finished the interview and then we're kind of just shooting the shit. And I tell her about my situation, whatever, not to make you my dear diary, but I I said to her, you know, it's, it's a tough, you know, thing because people get judgmental and it's, it's not so easy. And there are, you know, think complications that come with it, whatever. And she would always say to me, you know, and I say always, cause we've had this conversation multiple times, but she would always kind of say, you know what, if it works for you, it works and it just works for us. So I saw her a couple months later in person at a real housewives premiere and I jogged her memory and she remembered and she even asked, Oh, how's it going with you guys? And she said the same thing. She's like, you know what, if it works for you, that's all that matters. Okay. Clearly it is not working for her and tomboy because her and Tommy Tom, because we're finding out now all this stuff and how he just declined physically and mentally and was just not nice to her. So she says, and all of these things. And I always kind of romanticize them in my head because I'm like, it could come true. You know, 
riding off with your man and depends into the sunset. No, but here's, here's the kicker. What's hilarious. So one of my last events I covered in LA before the panty came in is it was this, it was right before the election. Uh, and it was this DNC gathering at the Abbey, which is the most like iconic gay bar in Hollywood. And I actually think that they had problems during the pandemic. I hope that they're still open because it's very famous. I remember the owner speaking out, crying at a press conference being like, we're going to have to close. So I hope they're good. Um, okay. So it's at the Abbey who comes up to me, but Tom Girardi, Tom Girardi, like literally on his deathbed basically. And he, he straight up hits on me. Okay. Straight up hits on me. He made a comment, something about my smile or, Oh, you the glisten or twinkle in your eye or the smile. And I even was like flirting back with him. I'm like, Tom Girardi, just make my day. Why don't you literally make my speaking of make my day. Like where the hell was Clint Eastwood in that moment? Because that would have gone entirely different. Let me tell you. Yeah. I've actually have been at an event with Clint Eastwood and it is everything and more. It is everything and more. This whole episode is dedicated to Clint, like who I wish was on my something that rhymes with his name. Okay. Sorry. That's inappropriate. Anyhow, not Clint now, but Clint like good, bad and ugly. Okay. But he was, he had a pop in like a way later. Like he, I put it on my Instagram story and I know y'all agree men and women. And can I also just say, while I'm on this, when I was prepping for this episode, I put up slides of different old men like Harrison Ford and Clint Eastwood. And I had you guys slide to rate how like sexy it was to you because it is interesting to me again, like the older man thing. Is it a myth or, you know, is it in our heads or is it for real? And it cracked me up because I literally had straight dudes vote uh, more passionately and prevalently than like the straight women. So straight dudes love you here for you. We can all appreciate a silver Fox. Okay. So you have all those examples right now. Let's run through really quickly. The women in Hollywood who have been older than their mans. We have Gabrielle union, Dwayne Wade, nine years, Priyanka Chopra, Nick Jonas, 10 years, Courtney Kardashians and some man she dated 14 years, Jada Pinkett Smith, when she and will, Willie boy were separated 21 year difference of this guy. She dated like go Jada, get it popping. Lisa Bonet and Jason Momoa. Love it. They have a 12 year difference sidebar about Jason. When I interviewed him on the set of Aquaman and he was just in between takes. See, it's like you guys are with me and my fanny pack in between takes. He would just kind of like play the guitar and be sexy and everyone on the set visit because it's a bunch of reporters right and the talent and the actors and of course leave it to me to be like okay so let's talk about Aquaman's shirtless moment and the sex appeal and the sexual tension between you and Amber Heard and everyone's like okay like I just wanted to know what color his costume was but okay Taylor you're gonna go there and he took it like a champ well duh because he bones Lisa Monet how could you not right uh, she's a boss bitch. Okay. When JLo dated Casper Smart, she was 18 years older. Demi and Ashton, 16. Madonna, she's popping all over this uh, genre. <laughs> she she has had age gaps as big as 13 years where she's been older. Mariah and Nick Cannon, she was 10 years older. Okay. So you get the idea, right? This is actually relevant because there are speculations that Angelina Jolie is boning the weekend, in which case, like, you're Angelina Jolie. You are a goddess. Like, I'm sorry. Speaking of Hercules, like, that's what she deserves. She deserves the most Hercules monster dick out there. What is it about the weekend getting all this tail between Bella Hadid, Selena Gomez? Like, I now, Angie, does this guy have a dick with superpowers? Like, I need to know. I will not rest until I have the proof. Okay. So this gets me to Hollywood. So my point is with the men and the women, it does go the other way. The gaps may not be as big. And again, it might not be as prevalent, but it does go the other way. And you know what? Maybe we make it something that it's not because I have to tell you, I had to like dig up these examples with the women and with the men, they again, and this is where psychology today knows what it's doing, because I feel like the men, right, they get so much more judgment. And like the media makes such a spectacle out of it. Whereas like the women, like I said, I had to dig this shit up as if I was going through Tom Girardi's legal files. So I don't know. There's that. 
Okay, now let's talk about Hollywood, okay? Because people get really pissed about the ageism in Hollywood. Like Gina Davis notably talks about this, how women aren't as screen on screen or behind the camera nearly as much as men, especially as they're older. So let's dive into this and yet again see the the myth busters, the fact from the fiction, the truths from your brain. <laughs> okay. So overall, guys, let's just acknowledge it for what it is. Okay. Hollywood is a superficial ass business. And in 2019, SAG, which is an actor's union, get your life right, came out with a number. And they said, I don't know if it's a study. So it's a number. Okay. That there are 87% fewer work ops for its, I can't even read this shit, for its members in the 60 to 80 age groups, then for actors 25 to 45. So when you got your geriatric shoes popping, okay, you have an 87% less likely chance of being getting work than someone 25 to 45. That just, I think, and we're seeing that change, right? I'm going to talk about this, but look at shows like Grace and Frankie, the Kaminsky method. Hell, even look at the Golden Girls, how iconic that was, right? So you know, it, it is, it's, it's, we're getting, we're getting the older peeps represented. It's we're doing, we're doing well, getting it, you know, getting them the shine that they deserve. So I do understand there is age, ageism in Hollywood, but it has shifted. Okay. But I will say there are men who are on screen more later in life. Okay. So here's a study um, that was in USA Today. You guys, are you feeling the scientific math magician tailored today? That is a tongue twister. I'm going to put that on a shirt. Okay. Brains and boobs, everybody. Okay. So percentage of female characters in their 30s was about 30% compared to like a 15% drop once they're in their 40s versus men. They're about 30% in their 30s. Okay, same as women. But then once they go to their 40s, unlike the 15% drop in women, it only dropped 28% from 30. So all you need to know is men like, yeah, we we get we're we're getting the clints and we're getting off to them all day long on the screen. Okay. This is just a study done in this past spring, by the way. 10% of movies last year included male characters 60 and older, whereas only 6% included female characters, 60 and older. Okay. Now I'm going to pop up really quickly. This chart that was in one of these studies. Okay. And here's this chart. And this is like, okay. It says the Hollywood age gap is real. So what they say is the rule of thumb is of what's appropriate is half your age plus seven. Now, as you can see, here are some iconic examples of age gaps in movies. We have like Catherine Zeta Jones, Sean Connery, of course, who could forget Richard Gere and Julia Roberts, pretty woman, right? So here you have the gap. And the if you want to pause, like, go ahead and have, have a good time with that. The, the blue dot is the half your age plus seven rule, which is appropriate. So basically what it's showing you is how Hollywood just said F right off to that rule and did gaps mightier and tidier than that. So it's a thing. We're not pretending it's not. It's a thing. But here's where I ask again, because there have been movies made where the older woman goes with the younger man. Right. But my question is, again, is this like a social and or biological thing where when it comes to the older woman, younger dude, it just doesn't have that sort of like fantasy whimsical thing going on about it. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And does that go into what I said earlier about younger women finding even older women, hell finding the older man who has their ish together more attractive. Okay. Cause think about it. Like where it was the other way with older women, younger guys, here are some of like the graduate, obviously, we have the boy next door with JLo where she had Ryan Guzman as like the psycho stalker. Um, and something's got to give when Diane Keaton was with Keanu Reeves, like when he was the hot doctor, we also have Reese Witherspoon with that hot ass man, uh, who was in, they were, it was the movie home again. And in the movie, I believe she was 40 and he was only 28. So again, not the biggest difference, but even to the eye, we're like not used to it. And again, like, is it for some women? I'm sure like that's a total fantasy. But like, to me, I would rather be riding Clint Eastwood's cowboy boots 
from here to Minnesota, you know, bareback on a horse. Like, I, you know what I mean? That's just me. And maybe that's the majority of women. And that's my point. It's like, maybe there is something to be said about the difference there. Okay. So here's what I want to say, but before I get into the grand finale of like, again, we get so uptight and I get it. I get it. You know, I get the idea of like how annoying it is to have a younger woman, like come in and swoop in and take like career ops and mans and all that shit. Like I get that the frustration is there and why it's there. Right. But let me give you some optimism, ladies, because here's the thing. And this boils down to younger men, younger women going with older men and older women, albeit having higher sex drives, not going with younger men as much. Here's the thing. Like I said, we women, we got it together. We are accomplished. We run ships in the office and in home and in personal life and family lives. And we're wise and we just got it all going on. Okay. Okay. Do we really want to be messing around with these fuck boys? Think about it. Like you're an accomplished woman. You really, you really want to be wasting your time with some loser named Jared who gets off to N64 all day and whose mom cooks him pizza for him. I mean, give me a break. Like we're better than that. Right. So at the end of the day, is it just that like, does it really boil down to the fact that like young dudes just don't have their shit together and none of us are having it younger women and older women alike. Like are younger dudes, the bane of our existence. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But really like, do these grown accomplished women really want to fuck around with these little boys? You know, so that's a way to spin it, ladies, when you really think about it, you know, and and you could you could be like, yeah, good for this girl, like getting this young ass D, you know, big D Tom over here. And she's like pushing 60. Like, yes, go, Jessica, go, go, Jessica Lang. I don't know what Jessica Lang does in her private time, but it just came to me. OK, so, you know, it could it could definitely. But I'm just saying to make you, you know, to give you a sense of ease and to explain a little bit. OK, so this is what you know, brings me to my last piece here, which is that being later in life is seems awesome, especially these days. And this is why I don't like how we're so judgmental and uptight when it comes to whether it be age gaps or, you know, power struggles and with age and in the workplace or in Hollywood, like, I feel like we need to shine a light on the fact that number one, we need to be a little more like the Lance Basses and be less judgmental and also be psyched because people are doing things later in life now and kicking ass and it's really limitless. Okay. So like, Let's think because there's also that double standard, right? That it's like, oh, men go on to thrive and be silver foxes and women are spinster cat ladies. Not true. Not true. So instead of wallowing, okay, in sorrow, let's think about all of the success stories. So first of all, when it comes pertaining to Hollywood, right? Because that's my world. So in the Hollywood Reporter, this was recent as well. And I think that this is a good thing. I don't think that this is a bad thing, but it said that the average age for women to start directing, say behind the camera, okay, is 40. I think that's inspiring. It's like you can get a lease on life, brand new lease on life in your 40s, 50s. I mean, I'm going to read you some of these. Patty Jenkins, who directed Wonder Woman, 49. Kate Shortland, who did Black Widow, 52. Sophia Coppola, 50. Ava DuVernay, 48. I think that that's so inspiring. It's like, you know, we always put Hollywood as like, oh, it's shining a light on young people. And while I do think young people like need a voice and need to get in there, obviously, for obvious reasons, you know, I think it's really inspiring to see people in midlife, you know, crushing it. Okay. And then on camera, on camera, I mean, we just had the Emmys nominations for 2021 come out. Okay. So we had, here are some, here are some from just this year. Okay. We have Allison Janey nominated. She's 61. Jean Smart, who's 69. And Ann Dowd, who's 65. Those are just some. But even think about, like I said, Grace and Frankie that have Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. Jane is uh, 83 and Lily is 81. And these bitches are nominated like every year. Okay. That says something. I think that's amazing. The Kaminsky method with my man's Michael Douglas, which I also is why I just started watching it. And I'm like, this is another thing that sparked this episode. And I'm like, does anyone else think that he's hot, even though he's like in he's like a depend spokesperson, like someone save me again. I don't know if this is just me or what's happening here. Right. But 
Okay, you have Michael Douglas, who's 76. He was just nominated. And again, that show is always nominated and has been winning awards. Anthony Hopkins just won the Oscar in that shit show. I'm not going to start getting into that right now, but he was he's 82. OK, Frances McDormand, she won for Best Actress this year. She's 64. So that's really exciting, right? We need to play this stuff up instead of always being like, oh, my God, I am 65 and here is retirement and an early grave for me. No, like we are doing so many cool things later in life. And that really, really excites me. And now beyond Hollywood, OK, we need to stop being so vain and superficial and judgmental when it comes to people doing things later in life. And that's the thing, too. It's like, I don't know. I have this conversation a lot about traditional, like, why aren't people settling down like this way to do it? Right. Like our parents and our parents, parents, the older generations where the like proper thing to do is like settle down and have a house and have kids, you know, in your twenties or your thirties. And then by the time you're in your sixties, you're a grandparent. It's like, Oh my God, talk about stick up your butt. And if you want to do that, and I know people who do, that's cool. That's your life. You, you know, the suburbs can be popping if you so choose. That's your life, right? But I also feel like we put this pressure on ourselves. And when I'm going to read you what I'm about to read you, it's like there is no need. Again, it's like, let's, let's acknowledge we're in a different time. The life expectancy is popping. We're no longer Puritans. So let's get it moving and shaking, okay? Now, here are some examples that I want to leave you feeling inspired and um you know, hopefully on a stripper pole. Okay. When you're like pushing, when you're Dolly Parton's age. So JLo, let's talk about JLo. Okay. How she mesmerized us with her hustlers performance and her strip number, right? She was 50 crushing it, crushing it on the strip, making that stripper pole her bitch. Okay inspiring and iconic. Now let's talk about the lady who just went on, um, Jeff Bezos's Dick rocket ship. Uh, she was the oldest lady. And I think person to ever go in space, 82 years old, 82 year old, this woman riding a straight up dick up into space. Okay. 82 limitless. Amazing. I'm going to pull this picture up. If you're watching of sting, I saw them talking about this last night on nightly pop. Look at sting in his speedo. Okay. His dick and balls and all 69 and he's ripped gorgeous Dolly. Again, I'm going to, you know, bring it back to the playboy experience because don't forget. And I'm going to remind you tonight when you're sleeping too. Okay. We must never forget. Okay. Vera Wang. She didn't even start her business until she was 40. And my last favorite example <laughs> to get you all really pumped up today, no matter how you feel about them, are our current and our former president, right? Trump and Biden. Now, you may be like, look at these babbling idiots. Well, more so for the, <laughs> for the former. But you know the thing. No, but even our presidents, right, regardless of how you feel about them. And so many people are like, oh, my God, get these dinosaurs off of the stage for the love of God. And I know I've even said that, too. I've been like, we need fresh, younger people with like visions and new perspectives and who really want to make change. And I still do believe that. But there is something to be said. And while I don't fancy either of these dinos, there is something to me that's really inspiring seeing them be in their 70s and running the free world. I just think it's a reminder that, again, we th there is no limit. Look at how much people are accomplishing and doing with their lives later in life. It's amazing. So that's the point. Let's get it going. OK, and I hope that you are the boy and the girls next doors. I hope that you're the Dennis Quaid's. I hope you're the Dolly Parton's. I hope you're whoever the F you want to be. We just need to get this uh, judgment and stigmas and, you know, irritability around age. Kick it out the window because, guys. You are going to be hopping and thriving no matter what age it is. Live your lives. Be excited about getting older, less judgment. And if I don't bone Clint Eastwood by the time he dies, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs>